Okay, guys, we're going to be going through this uh, marble slides with exponentials activity. I'm going to try to keep this very brief, but kind of explain um, or at least show a little bit about what each piece of an equation does to our graph over here. So I'm going to choose slide four, fix it number two as an example. And then we're going to just kind of play around and see what happens with the graph. So this means we're not giving away every single answer or something like that, but we're giving you the tools necessary to uh, come up with your own approach. If you're in my classes, you know that for the challenge slides at the end, I ask that you only do half of the, I believe, eight. So that'd be four. Um, there's definitely multiple ways to do it. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into it. A lot of the challenge questions will need use of these brackets at the end where we have X and then an inequality symbol and then some number. So if you notice what we have right now is X. So if you remember that left and right here is the X axis, that's going to be affecting us in the left and right direction. Greater than means that we're going to be only looking at the part of the line that is to the right of whatever number I have here. So if that's a negative seven, if you look, I have a zero, and then if I head this way, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, right here, I'm only showing things to the right because of that greater than sign. If I flip back and I change this to less than, now I only see the left part of the line. So just wanted to show you how do you kind of cut your line at a certain spot it would be with that so if i change this back if you look at like negative or i'll even put positive seven instead um here let's put that back real quick um oh positive seven is not showing up because it's off the screen that makes sense how about a one so if you look right here at the x value of one anything that is to the right of that x value gets shown Anything that's not, does not get shown. Okay. Um, going to reset real quick. Let's look at this minus one. A lot of uh, the students were able to figure out during our warm up what this did. But anytime I have a plus or minus at the end, if you notice right now, this kind of bottom part that flattens out is one below the x axis. That's because of this minus one. If I make it like a zero, sits at the y value of zero. Let's say if I put a plus five, now this flat part sits at plus five. So whatever you have tacked on to the end here, it's gonna move up or down that amount. Up top with the x, if I put parentheses around that, so if I have x like minus five, oops, uh, parentheses x, that's what it looks like right now, but let's say I put like a minus five. Notice that the entire thing, so this is kind of what was on the origin before, is now shifted to the right five. So if you put it back, you can see that point in the gray there. If I put like a plus two, now you notice that moves to the left two. So this is our way of moving this left and right. You could also make this X into a negative number and you see that the whole thing has a reflection whenever you uh, flip the sign over the y-axis. So it goes from opening to the left to opening to the right. This two here, if I make that negative, flips over the x-axis. So flips uh, from going up to going down. The two itself, when this becomes very large, pay attention to the curvature here, say like 200, that gets really steep versus when I get smaller than two, like a one, actually flattens out completely. Or if I use, like we said, a negative, it goes the other direction. If I use something between one and two, like a 1.1, it's just barely curved and then goes up from there. So that's definitely going to be useful. Um, something like 0 0.5 almost looks like a reflection as well. Basically, if I have like 1.5 and then 1.4, 3, 2, I'm getting flatter and flatter. 
And then if I go to like 0 0.9, the other end starts coming up. So that's another way you could think about it. So if you put all these together, you should be able to reason out um, a way to solve these challenge slides. Remember that you're allowed to, in those challenge slides, use multiple equations. So don't be afraid to throw another uh, line in here. Remember you want the x value in the exponent. That way it gives you the shape and you're still talking about an exponential. If you move that x into the base, then it becomes linear, like a straight line, like my red one here. So just something to keep in mind. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap up here. Hopefully that helps. Um, let me know if you have questions. Other than that, we'll see you guys.